welcome to Recall the Midwife. We are three super fans of Call the Midwife and we watch each episode and talk about it. Today we are discussing Series 7, Episode 7. I'm Alex. I'm Becky. I'm Jen. A reminder that this week's episode deals with death and dying and grief and loss. So if those topics are ones you would prefer to skip this time, we understand and hope you join us for the next one. In this week's episode, Tom rushes to Barbara's bedside. After being diagnosed with meningitis, she's kept in isolation, but Tom keeps a vigil at the hospital. Barbara's patients are distributed between the other midwives and Lucille makes a home visit to check on Mrs. Palmer. Mrs. Palmer is also from Jamaica and reminds Lucille of home. Lucille is struggling after facing discrimination at her church. She learns that Mrs. Palmer's husband is a pastor and she invites Lucille to join their prayer group. With support from Val, she decides to take up the offer and finds a warm welcome. Sheila returns to her former role to support the Nanatans in Barbara's absence. Meanwhile, Dr. Turner has been assigned to work at Wadelock House, a juvenile detention centre. He meets Michael Sumter, who is being bullied. He sees Michael defending his wife's honour and learns that Michael found himself there after making a mistake in an attempt to support his pregnant wife, Alison. His mother-in-law dislikes him and she attempts to keep Alison away from him. But Sheila crosses paths with Alison and informs her that Michael is due in court. Alison goes into labour as she attempts to see Michael. She's admitted to the maternity home and gives birth to a baby boy. Michael is sentenced to three years, but he's determined to turn his life around for his son. Barbara rallies and her condition improves, which gives everyone great hope. However, she has suffered irreparable damage and Tom and Phyllis are by her bedside when she passes away. <gasps> oh my god. Oh girls. This is okay. my worst ever episode ever for ever this lived is- of any the TV show ever ever. This is horrible episode. I'm just gonna tell you, Becky, that was a very, very good synopsis. You wanna hear what we wanna hear what my my notes based synopsis is? Barbara with two exclamation points. <laughs> then Tim wants to go see the Rolling Stones. Then Star Jumps versus Jumping Jacks. Dr. Turner at the Reform School due to scabies. That's it. <laughs> That's what I got. That's what I've got this week, girls. My first lines are, oh, Barbara, four exclamation marks, and then crying face. Oh, my God. I literally, like, this, oh, this, oh, I, 30 seconds into the episode, just tears are shooting. I mean, I, I, I genuinely, like, soaked about four tissues watching this. I, this was just such a hard episode. I very rarely cry when I'm watching it. But I did. And you know, when you start to cry and then you try and like swallow it and then you like your throat hurts because you're like swallowing a cry. Yeah. Alex is like, no, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I just let it out. That's why. <laughs> Have you ever heard me sneeze? No. Uh, well, I couldn't <laughs> identify it. And I... It's really, really loud. I just don't try and keep anything in. I'm just like <laughs> screaming. <laughs> That's the first time I watched this episode. I just wasn't, ex- I just didn't Same. see it coming with Barbara. Well, no. it's because people were all visiting her. Yeah, yeah I like really she, thought she was going to get better. She well, rallies, she, and you think, oh, she's making a recovery. You're like, thank God. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Also, can I just say, I did say last week it was meningitis and sepsis. Yes, you so. did. You did. <laughs> You know, just to just to make be smug about something while we're really sad. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh, I like literally when I was watching this episode, I was like, I don't think I can do the pod about this. I Same. think it's gonna be too hard to talk about it. And I, I honestly, if we start talking about it, I am gonna probably get emotional well, again. Do you know what? I was really annoyed because obviously last week was a really hard episode for me. Yeah, to talk about on the pod, and now this, I'm like, great, thanks for that. Two in a row. <sighs> Um, the Barbara, but I do have to say Barbara was one of my, oh, it's awful that we're saying was now. Oh, I'm feeling really sad. But she was one of my favourites ever. I just loved her so much. She was so amazing, yeah. so strong, yeah. so brilliant. And it was just really, really sad. I do think actually, though, they really did show how much she was loved and reflect that with the yeah. way I, death. I also thought it was lovely that she saw that. Yeah. Yeah. So well, why did the actress leave? Did she get? Did she leave for something, or she just? Do we know? No, we don't know. This is why they should sign lifetime contracts. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what, Bex? In the future, in about five years, probably not even more, there'll be AI actors, and we can just keep them forever. <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. But we also, don't it won't even be real acting. It won't be real acting. No, well, no. I hope I. I don't. I hope we never get to that place. But I mean, this episode just made me so sad. Do you know? I wasn't even that sad for Tom. I know that's bad. I was more heartbroken for Phyllis. I know. Same. I know. Oh, you no, know, his scene God. made me first cry when Fred and Violet were oh, hugging outside oh, like the hugged. shop. Give Tom my love, and they were just hugging each other extra hard because 
they, they were so sad. Well, and let's be real. Both of them are have lost a spouse. So yeah. they know how painful it is. Yeah. You know? Like they get it. Although I hope more for Phyllis, I do. I, I don't understand why that matron, I'm assuming she's a matron, once there was no risk of infection, why she still didn't let Tom actually be by Barbara's bedside. Oh, I mean, I think he was there a lot, actually. But at the start, they very much kept him away from her. He was just in the... Well, yeah, because of the risk. Waiting room, yeah. Yeah. Well, but then once... also, I think they try and just show her. It was really harsh in those days. I think that's what they were always trying to say on this show. Well, also, I just think, like, there wasn't as much knowledge as now. So, and they had, like, less... I mean, like, look at the masks that they wore when they went in the room. It's just, it's just cloth. I mean, like, look, I know we all wore masks for a very long time during the pandemic, but, like... The mat, the the cloth masks we we would wear were our second choice when we didn't have like proper PPE and everything. So I mean, if they'd, I mean, like nowadays, if Tom was going to go into a room and not be risk of any infection, he not only would wear a gown, he'd wear like a like a full like medical mask. He'd wear gloves, you know, the whole deal. Like I mean, I just think back then, like they didn't have the same capability. You know what I'm saying? Like they probably would have also had Barbara in like one of those like tents. You know what I mean? Like well, on those infectious units, you know, like they have all the, they have so many precautions. A bubble. Yeah, like a little bubble. Oh, okay. I've been here. Poor Nurse Crane and Tom. Tom says, I know how much you love her and how she loves you. And it just killed me because he was talking to Nurse Crane. And I just I thought, know. yes, she does. She does. I and know. Tom never left the hospital the whole time. I know. And then when he but was I... allowed to go into Barbara, he was talking about moving to the country and having babies. And then she woke up and I was just like, oh. Oh God, let's not even get there yet for a second. Like this, the scene where he was just standing outside in the rain and it was just like soaking him mm-hmm. and Phyllis came up with the umbrella and she's like, oh, here you go, lad. Like I've got some clean clothes and some food. He's like, she's like, you've got to go home and try to sleep. She's like, I know how hard it is. And he's like, I know, but it's not getting better. Like, I don't know what to do. They won't say anything. Like she's just the same as she was. And then Phyllis in like truly one of the most heroic efforts, she was like, well, but that cuts both ways. It Like, you know, she's not getting worse, like, and she could be getting better. So, you know, you have to hold on to that. And I just, oh God, Phyllis. <sighs> well, we know that Barbara, so Barbara did wake up when he was talking about having babies in the country. Mm. And he speaks about, they have a little chat about Phyllis. And she says, Phyllis said you'd say that about his, uh, she was like, oh, you need to shake. Yeah. Like, Phyllis said you say that. And she was like, Phyllis knows everything. I know. Goddamn right she does. Oh, gosh. Oh, I know. And then they rang Marta's house to tell everyone that she'd woken up and everyone was so happy. Mm-hmm. Oh. Now, I just need to highlight, because when when we get onto it, I want to talk about it, and I need this as, like, the backstory, is that Lucille, because obviously Lucille is going through a lot in this episode, cause she's home... Not that... She is homesick, but also she's really struggling. Yeah. To fit in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And also welcome. that made me I'm getting I'm going off at a tangent because I'm cross that she feels like she has to fit in. She should just be made to feel welcome. But Lucille asks Phyllis if she would like to pray with her. And Phyllis is very adamant that she doesn't want to pray with her. She's happy for Lucille to pray for her, but she doesn't want to, and she doesn't oh, want to. This is a deleted scene for us. Oh, well, really? This is this is important because I think this is the most power. This is what made me later. Same. Like this is important context, Jen. Okay. Because it really, I, really added. To I think the I, end I, scene. I think I, I think I know where you're going with this. But yes, yeah, keep going. Yeah. So and Lucille says like I, I knew she wouldn't want to pray with me. I don't know why I asked her if she would wanted to pray with me, but she just she said that she's used to kind of praying with people. Yeah. Well, I mean, to, uh, to build on your point, I, I mean, what was really, what was really sweet about and and absolutely like gutting and heartbreaking about it is that I know that we all know from previous episodes that Phyllis has said, like, I don't believe in God. Like, I don't have like that. I don't have a faith in anything like a higher power or whatever. A heathen. And she and Tom kind of, huh? <laughs> She's a heathen. That's what Sarah's sister wanted to like a joke called, wasn't it? Her yeah, and exactly. Bella, heathens. Yeah. <laughs> but um, her and Tom kind of have like an, an agree to disagree kind of a thing. And then Barbara is the, you know, glue that kind of holds them together. And so, I mean, to me that, yeah, I just, I, I thought about that a lot as I was watching this episode. Because I mean, Phyllis, even though she doesn't have kind of religious faith, everybody's got to lean on something. 
you know, and she had as much, I don't know, just like goodwill, I guess, which is, I don't want to call it faith because it's not that. I don't want to assign that to her. But like, you know, she she tried to lift people up in her way, you know, and like prayer is often considered a way to lift somebody up or like comfort. So, I mean, like everybody's just you, like what when you're going through these times, you're just going to you're just going to dig for something to help get you through. You know what I mean? And we have all got whatever it is we've got. But yeah, no. I lie on the floor listening to really heavy music. Yeah. I find that stressful, Alex. <laughs> that's my most le- that no, that's not my most stressed. That is my least stressed state. Lying on the floor, living it, listening to the high what I can't even speak today, listening to the heaviest music I can. I can remember the old olden days when you'd bought a heavy metal CD when you were with me and we were driving somewhere and you put your new CD on in the car. Yeah. And I was doing some particularly stressful driving. I was having to change lanes and I was just like, I can't listen to this music. <laughs> <laughs> See, that would make me feel I like heavy metal music. Like, oh, it, like it hurt. It just makes my brain like start to like short out. Short oh, circuit. it puts me into a state of happiness. <laughs> oh, God. I, I mean, yeah, like I and I and that's the thing. Like, I truly love that for you. And I really, really do. I it's just it's just everybody's got their own frequency. You know what I mean? Like I could never it just would, uh, would just immediately like stress me out. I'd be like, I hate, do you this, know what? I hate this. My daughter's is bacon. Oh, oh, now I'll tell you what I do. Lo- I, I do. I've actually planned a bake for today as Ooh, a you thing to do. Oh, so girls teaser. I'm going to make those peanut butter fluff bars. <gasps> nuts is. Yeah, I'm going to make the fluff bar that we had the recipe <gasps> off of Instagram. Send us the, the pictures listener. and we'll put it on social media. I will, I will. I bought fluff. I bought peanut butter. I had a lot of the other ingredients or whatever. I'm not going to make, full disclosure, I'm not going to make, there's like a peanut butter frosting that goes like in the middle and then the fluff goes on top and the bars on the bottom. I can't do the frosting. Otherwise, I'll die of cardiac arrest and then I'll just be in your ghost <laughs> on these episodes. But, but I'm going to do the, I'm going to do the fluff runners and I'm so excited about it. Well, we bake, I sent you the picture. I'll put them on social media actually. People, I'll put it on the same time as the, uh, as the fluff nutters. But we baked some uh, hedgehog cookies today. Yeah, and they're I, so cute. He wanted they're music so on and just her music and to bake that. And she was like, this is where I feel most relaxed. That's what she said to me. Oh, that is so sweet. That is so sweet. I she will can say apply baking. The bake off when she's older. When she's nine, we've already looked it up. Oh. <laughs> she's when she's nine, she can do it. It junior yeah, bake off. Oh, junior. Oh, okay. There's so me she's... trying to get you two to do it, and she's well up for it already. Come on, she's got three <laughs> well, years it's... to go. It's hard for me because I'm in the US and we don't have bake off the same way. And over I just here. know that I couldn't handle the pressure. I'll tell you what I couldn't handle Nadia, standing on my feet for six hours. Say it again, Nadia. <laughs> I just think standing up would be so hard. Like my back would be like killing me. But anyways, <laughs> anyway, right, I would love so to do it. Phyllis arranges a timetable of visitors to go to Barbara, mm-hmm. and they all go for five minutes apiece, and it was lovely because they're all showing, and it's just there was music all showing it as this montage and we're like yes Barbara's totally getting better and we're, we can relax now the first time yeah and the, the first time I watched the episode I was like okay we're out of the woods Barbara's on the mend everyone's visiting all is well with the world and yeah. then they cut the music and it's just Phyllis and Barbara and we're thinking oh lovely a lovely heartwarming conversation about how they appreciate each other and situations like this make you think appreciate people and what happens is Phyllis look at these they're worse aren't they I can't feel anything with them either and we're like oh no she can't be a midwife anymore this is the awful thing that's going to be awful that she can't be a midwife and they're all crying that she can't be a midwife anymore and they're all really upset about it Barbara's crying her own because she's never going to be a midwife (sighs) oh did you see Barbara crying in bed and that's the worst when you cry in bed and then you just have a wet neck where all your tears have like or wet ears when it like drips down the side of your face and it goes into your ears surely you just turn your head yeah but it all rolls down and you just end up with a wet neck and yeah like jen said wet why aren't you sitting up and sorting it well if you're lying in bed crying why (laughs) we're letting it out alex (laughs) you for sure barbara Barbara couldn't move Well, Barbara couldn't move, though. I mean, she was yeah, like... That's what, no, she's excused. You two are. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you've never dramatically laid down and just sobbed your eyes no, out. I can't. I've done that. Oh, my God. I've done it so many times. You know oh, what? I'll try it, and I'll let you know how it goes. <laughs> it feels so good. It's like, it's so cathartic, and like, you just feel so dramatic. You feel like, oh, just, you're just you just know letting why it all out. I haven't done that? Because I have heavy metal music in my life. All I'm saying is, maybe you should try it. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Having that happiness there. Oh, gosh. Oh, but so anyway. Like, 
Oh, go on. It's the fact that she knows she's not getting better. And she has that conversation. She knows what's coming. She has that conversation with Phyllis. I just think it's the most heartbreaking thing. Yeah. And then she has a conversation with Tom about babies and bringing their engaged like you know she was like oh well mate we may not be able to do be a midwife but you know we could have our own babies and then she asked him to bring her engagement ring and she says their wedding this wedding day with where i wore the cape was the safest i've ever felt because of you i know and i've just got oh. loads and loads and loads of tear emojis on my phone that was actually that i feel like like and i i, I mean this in a genuinely nice way like that that scene okay i think I can't remember her name. God bless her. The the girl who plays Barbara and Charlotte Phyllis. Charlotte Ritchie. Charlotte Ritchie and the lady who plays Phyllis. Those two women are such amazing actresses. Like they are just so, so talented. And yeah, I feel are. like they both elevated Tom up. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like they, like he, like his scene work with the two of them was the best. You know, like he, like when he was. When when Barbara was talking, when she was wake, when she was saying that about like their life in the country and it was the most wonderful dream, and his face was just crumpling and the tears were coming down. Girls, I mean, that was the realest I think we've ever seen Tom ever. You know what I mean? That was just so like he was just in his element there. I just oh god. And I'll just say this like I now I don't know why this connection was made in my brain, but have you guys ever seen the movie Steel Magnolias? Yes, yes. I weirdly watched it the other week. Oh, okay. Yeah. So Steel Magnolia. So anyway, so I watched that, you know, like when I was a kid, right? And I, I love that movie. And it's like, you know, I haven't seen it in a long time. So who knows now if there's stuff that like hasn't aged well. But anyway, my... how did you watch that as a child and grow up as a normal human? Because that is so upsetting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the but darkest... there's so many films. There's Steel Magnolias. Terms of Endearment. Have you ever seen that? Yeah. Mm. Oh, God, that's a heartbreaker. That's really Beaches. Heartbreaking. Never beaches. Oh, you beaches never seen beaches. I watch stuff like Problem Child. <laughs> <laughs> you know about my taste in films. <laughs> I watched it probably as a teenager. I mean, I literally can remember renting the VHS from Blockbuster. And I will say this, my mom never wanted us to watch it because it's about a diabetic who has a really horrible, you know, health outcome ultimately and like dies. I mean, not, Can I not just say, a... I what, caught it and didn't understand why she died. So now you've just really connected a dot for me brilliant thank oh you. yeah yeah well so my dad was diabetic and yeah. so i think she thought that it would really scare us if we thought you know watch the story about this like, yeah, woman who dies you know because of a complication from diabetes but anyway so we watched the movie and like that ultimately like like I, honestly when i watched the movie it never occurred to me like it never really it never really like made a thing but anyways but the scene that it made me think of when phyllis and barbara were talking when phyllis oh, not when phyllis when barbara like she had her hands clenched and then she shows phyllis her fingertips and they're just terrible like they're all red and everything and tom had just been there and at the in seal magnolias sally field is in the hospital and she's with shelby the whole time and won't leave her bedside and she reads magazines and she does she rubs her foot with you know she like rubs her feet with lotion like you know she's doing everything she can to bring her daughter back because she doesn't know she's gonna make it and then and she has this really powerful scene at the end i think it's after she's passed away where she's like all the men like they couldn't take it like they had to leave like they were they were with her but like who was with her through the end who was with her through the worst of it that was me you know and she was saying it because she's her mother but it just I don't know for some reason it just put it together in my mind that like and look nothing from Tom because Tom was an incredibly incredibly loving and devoted husband but ultimately Phyllis was the one who had to carry him and Barbara through the yeah. end you know like when tom broke down during you know psalm 29 and phyllis had to keep going even though that's not her faith to do it and like be the one to like tell when barbara goes she was there you know oh bless you yeah, oh, also, I just, to be fair, oh i just can't Phil barbara just also a... said to phyllis you know you're really good at looking after people and you're gonna have to look after tom because this next bit's gonna be the hard bit she absolutely prophesied not prophesied but she knew that tom knew. was not yeah she knew she tom needed phyllis's strength and yeah. it was horrific oh tom crying killed me the ring oh. then the worst bit as well afterwards when everyone was in an artist's house waiting and they all I just know. raced in and phyllis did what i would do which I was know. get away from the hug and go outside yeah. and just oh god when she was ugly crying howled. on the steps Yes, oh, just sobbing, just sobbing and, and just totally bankrupt at that point. Well, oh. like totally. you say, she has the conversation with Phyllis because she knows what's coming. She doesn't yeah. have that conversation with Tom. No. no. 
And you, no. you, I wasn't sure what the is it a prayer that they were reciting? Oh, a psalm. Yeah, psalm a psalm. Mm -hmm. I wasn't sure what the psalm was, but that's what to me that was the most powerful moment was that when Tom couldn't carry on, yeah. even though Phyllis has said before that she she doesn't want to pray don't ask her to pray but she recites it word for word yeah Poor well and she knows it, she knows it helps tom and she knows it helps barbara and exactly. she does it because exactly. she wants to comfort the person who can hear her and the person who loves her can't anymore yeah yeah she did it for them um, oh. Charlotte Mitchie. So goodbye to Charlotte Mitchie, who was so amazing, and we loved her so oh, much. Oh my god! Well, honestly, like even like okay, so she, when she tells Barbara about her about that she knows that she's worse, and then Barbara's like, "Oh my god, hold on, last like I'm gonna get the doctors or whatever." And you, there's this, there's this short moment where you just see Barbara sitting there in bed or laying in bed, and the tears are coming down. And again, she's just so amazing because in that moment, I just thought this is Barbara is reckoning with like the fact that she knows she's not gonna make it, you know like yeah she she was like she said oh i hate to see the people i love upset you know she i mean talk about a death that is so much how you lived but also so exemplary in terms of like the kind of person that barbara was you know like brave to the end loving to the end kind to the end you know like she just it, she just exemplified her whole spirit in that in that episode of her at the end of her life and oh if all of us could be so noble as barbara oh my god oh I hate that she's gone. Um, but I do have a fact about Charlotte Ritchie. Oh, yeah? Do you know who her famous granddad is? Shane Ritchie. Lionel Ritchie. <laughs> Shane Ritchie. <laughs> Lionel Ritchie. <laughs> I don't know which one's worse. <laughs> Americans Google Shane Ritchie, for God's sake. Um, <laughs> it's not called Ritchie. It's surname. He's a famous, a really famous Hollywood Welsh actor. Oh, 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 wait. Cary Grant. Didn't you tell us this before? No. That's not oh. Cary Grant. Wait, he's not Welsh anyway, is he? Welsh actor. Wait, is Cary Grant Welsh? Did I make um, that up? No, he's from Bristol, I think. Huh. Wait, who's Welsh then? Uh, well, hang on. Is he? Because now I'm wondering, is he Welsh? Hang on, I'll tell you. But Cary Grant is not Welsh. Oh. Cary Grant is from Bristol, isn't he? I don't know. Oh. Check that. He is Welsh, this actor. Who? Really famous. What? Her granddad. Her granddad. I'll give you a clue. He was famously, famously married. To someone twice. Oh, Richard Burton. There yes. we go. Wow. That really? Was, that was her grandfather. Yeah. So wait, who was her... So who's, whose child of Richard Burton is her mother or father? Her mother. Okay. And who did Richard Burton have a kid with to ha have her mother? Do you know? Yes, I would. Well, I did know. I looked it up. Because I mean, it's I obviously not... The page. Page. Which marriage is it? Oh, he's is it he was married Elizabeth Taylor? It'll be after because... Oh, actually, no, I don't know. It might not be after, actually, because, no. I mean... I've just realised he's she's his granddaughter, not his... Daughter. Yeah, hang on, I'll tell you. Charlotte, Richie... I didn't know Richard Burton was Welsh. I'm not going to look anything up. I'm just going to go with the fact. Sybil Christopher, his first wife, yeah. Oh, wow. You know, I can kind oh, of see Oh, hang on, someone's put here, Richie's not related to Burton whatsoever. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> look at me being like, listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's like how, i'm not but, gonna fact check this but how did it how, you know I mean, the it irony here i did fact check i fact checked loads but i'm really tired and then i've just read down and down and it's not at all her it, scratch that i'm not gonna get rid of it just i'm gonna cut kind of looking stupid we've done bow war no we're not cutting it we've done bow war <laughs> <laughs> i thought a flying squad was helicopters i don't mind this too <laughs> if anything it adds some brevity to the uh oh to the, god well we really need it yeah, actually so. because my goodness so did Richard Burton was married to her grandmother, but then he left. No, her no, no, no. I think it's a different person completely. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so so Charlotte Ritchie isn't related to anybody famous. She's just a normal well, she lady. She might be. She might be. She just doesn't tell us. Wow. Huh. But I will I will say is she's outstanding. And yeah. we miss her very much still to this day in oh my God. I know. I know. <sighs> she's still my top one between her and patsy for my favorite ever midwife oh i love patsy same you know i think i love lucy as well actually i think phyllis might be my top favorite maybe. yeah i think phyllis is still oh i also favorite. love phyllis yeah and i love, Johnny. I just, and I love yeah. cynthia there's too many i love loads i know i know not jenny lee like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> no not jenny lee <laughs> <laughs> the more i know about her the less i like her <laughs> 
I've read I've read Jennifer West's book and I, I don't like it. Oh, Bex, how far how far into book three are you? Um, just I've only just started it. Okay. Oh, okay. I won't say anything else. But how how are you doing with book three? I'm gonna be honest. I hate it, and I yeah. got after last week's episode. I tried to read it and had to put it away because I couldn't even think about it. So I will be back yeah. this week. Yeah. I mean, no, is- no spoilers, <laughs> listener, but like th- book three honestly sucks no, for the no, first no, three no. quarters of it. It's horrible. Like, it's horrible. Yeah. Like, if you ever, <laughs> if you're ever like, oh. Well, if you ever think, oh, this, I'm really looking forward to a nice, refreshing, lovely read about, you know, lovely old time. A London. heartwarming oh. historical walk down memory lane by one of the most noble medical professionals of the last century who gave her all. Nope. Nope. It's if awful. ever you've been tempted to just say goodbye, cruel world, you know, this book will get you there. <laughs> My God. Oh, it's terrible. Honestly, whenever I think about like get like really like you know when they're like ai is going to end humanity and i'm like you know what that's actually fine i don't know that we really have much to stand on like reading books like this i'm like probably computers would do better than us you know what i mean we just there's not much worth fighting for like just it's okay you know what i mean like we had our shot we blew it that's fine (laughs) which i absolutely do not believe at all but it just oh god this book is so dark next week isn't gonna get any easier though girls because next week we've got barbara's funeral Oh, heavy, oh. heavy. Oh. We're just gonna miss a load, like the Sister Evangelina episode. Heavy, heavy, heavy. I thought I was sad at Sister Evangelina going. I know, but this was like this was sad and tragic at the same time because Barbara wasn't even thirty years old. I know. She barely had a chance in this life. You know what I mean? And what's oh, what's Tom gonna do now for his ironing? <laughs> He's just gonna wear crumpled clothes. <laughs> Well, clearly, Barbara was like... On Thursday, I went out, right? And I went out with my daughter and I went to the cinema and then I went for a milkshake afterwards with a little pal, right? It was lovely. Uh Apart from the cinema, it was awful. But Oh, wait, what did you see at the cinema? We went to watch Migration and it wasn't that funny and it was like had really scary bits three times for Uh, no bad reason. Was it a a cartoon? Cartoon, yeah, you. Anyway, it just annoyed me. Anyway, but that was fine. Everything was fine, but just because it was colder than I realised, I, I got a jumper off the uh, off the like hanger bit. Not you know like a clothes maiden. I got yeah. it off there. And, oh, yeah, you and bought then... a jumper while you were out because you were too cold. No, no, no. Yeah. I had it I literally just she grabbed it, off. it. She lifted it off her clothes area at home. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. And then whacked it on. Didn't even look in the mirror. I never would. And then literally got to the watched a film, all this, and then I got to the place where they were having milkshakes or whatever. And the woman literally said to me, behind the till, I'm buying a milkshake off for my daughter. You could have ironed your top. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, what happened to the customer? I was being right. Why do I need to hear that? Yeah, why I was just like, yeah, I could have, but I didn't, did I, mate? You can see I didn't. So why are you saying it? Well, also, what do you care? I'm not, at, I'm not at work. I don't mean, I, you don't even know me. Why and would I, you comment And also, on it wasn't like it was dead wrinkled. It was just one crease, you know, like it, because it's been folded over on the air. It well, was like a, a crease in the middle. It's not like a shirt where it's got all the 8,000 rumplies. It's a sweater. Yeah. She did say she liked it, but you could have ironed it. And I was like, rude. <laughs> You could have you could have kept your comments to yourself also, by the way. So just think about that for future. But she does sell an amazing milkshake. Oh. The sort no, of thing I would have done is left the cinema and then you know when you just found you've got little bits of popcorn all over you where you've dropped them in the cinema and they've just yeah. attached to your clothing. I've had it in my hair oh, yeah. before. I don't even have that longer hair. It's just embarrassing. <laughs> No, wait, was this the kind of milkshake where it was like ice cream plus milk blended up or was it like just milk? It's milk, but it's at bits of chocolate bars that are blended up. So I had malt in your mouth and it's Kinder Bueno, a whole Kinder Bueno bar and a whole thing of pack of Maltesers and then they blend them all up and put it in. To milk, just well, milk. It might have ice cream in as well, I don't know. But it was thick, like it was cream. like yeah, not, yeah, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. not just, it was thick, okay. That's no, they have I like a machine it. to shake it up. It's oh, okay. Well, there's got to be something else in there, like soft serve or something. Oh man, now I really want, now I really want some ice cream. Oh, it's next level good, I'm not going to lie. Oh. Should we get back to Cool Midwife? Yes, let's. Should we talk about Lucille? Because this kind of goes yes. side, side by side with the whole Barbara. Oh. I don't know why. Lucille's this, this, all the other, All the other storylines kind of just felt a bit blah to me in relation because Barbara's one was so intense. Well, Everything actually, I else... thought this one really was, went hand in hand with Barbara's. 
Yeah, yeah I, I don't know. It just didn't hit as much for me, I guess. I mean, I I I appreciated it, and I I I was sympathetic to Lucille, but at the same time, I was like, to be honest, I loved all of the other storylines that were going on, and I could have. This is one of those episodes. If it wasn't for Barbara's storyline that I would come back to. Yeah, and I kind of forgot that these storylines were going on with mm. the Barbara. Like, I was like, oh, oh, if I, yeah, exactly the same. I would totally like this one if it I wasn't cared... for the worst death in the history of anything I've ever watched ever. I cared more for the the juvenile detention young man than I did about the, about Lucille. Sorry. Oh, you're not sad for Lucille. I don't know. I was, but at the same time, I was like, I just felt like, I don't know. The scene with Valerie where she explained finally what the deal was, was, was very like good. You know, like that one really kind of, that like really put context to it. But I guess the whole time I was just kind of like, I don't know. Like, just go to a different church. Like, I I mean, I just, I don't know why it just didn't. Yeah, but it, the whole I, thing is she's conflicted, isn't she? Oh, I, I get it. And I was, I, I, I felt for her, I guess. I don't know. I guess it just didn't ring a bell as much for me. I was heartbroken when she says that she isn't sure that she can go to Mrs. Palmer's prayer group because Mrs. Palmer reminds her of her mum and her aunts. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm also going to, I'm also, okay. Full disclosure. We, I, okay. I have not watched the most recent season. I've only watched up to the most recent Christmas special. So I, that's where I stopped. Because we haven't gotten the new episodes just yet. So I don't know if there's something in the newest season that will change. Okay, so I'm just going to say this. But because I know what's happened in the future with Lucille and with, no spoilers, but Cyril, I guess I just didn't feel as much sympathy for Lucille in in this moment. Because I felt like I had that future context. Hey, and then now. I was like, I was like, okay, well, like, it, it just didn't, it just didn't feel as sympathetic to me this time watching it because so I know Jen, what she does in the future. I'm the exact so. opposite because of that. Mm. I feel like because I've now know the future, I yeah. feel like historically her character has always experienced some form of feeling conflicted, never feeling welcome, always being homesick. I think it explains the regs well, we've just spoiled it there. But I feel it <laughs> explains her exit even more. I think it explains how she was feeling even more and actually shows historical context to it. If anything, I was like, whoa, right, is that well impressive? We'll see. But that makes me more mad about it because that if she'd been feeling this way for so long, then why did she lie to herself and Cyril and get him involved and everything else and then decide she was going to ditch him like so bad? You know what I mean? But it's like, also, I think if, if Lucille felt at home, there's a lot of external forces which influence Lucille in this. Like she's yeah. in this episode, she's just faced discrimination at a church. Yeah. And she's been made to feel like she doesn't fit in. And then when she leaves, there's a, it, there's a similar situation. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I feel I like I feel really bad for her. Like the like the situation of the church that she's at is terrible. And like, absolutely, she should never have to go through that. I guess I guess I just like if you've been feeling this way for so long and you've been homesick for so long, then like you should have known. No, Jen, I'm, I'm going to take also like she really suffers like we can't talk about well we, we can't we can't go into it i'll it. just say like i just i i like on its own yes i'm with lucille but i this 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 storyline for me was kind of like okay you know what like she went to the nice church with the nice people like okay great end of story like and then i just kind of left it there like well, it's not one just, that i'm gonna like really well context here so lucille first meets mrs palmer when she's taking on barbara's client not clients clients is the wrong word patients patients yeah. Um, yeah. and she realizes she asks where she's from and she realizes she's from st Catharines. she's like oh i'm from manchester jamaica and they start talking and, and you can tell she's really at ease when she first speaks to her as well mm -hmm. um, which was good and she says the door is this door is always open like at home which i thought was really nice well, and, and, the, then, and the mom says, you know, like something about my husband being a pastor. And she's like, oh, what of what church? And she said, this church, like we literally have church in our living room. Like you should come anytime. And she was like, well, I don't know if I really want to. But then she, yeah. And I also, my heart breaks for Lucille because Lucille says that she should be trying harder to fit in. And I'm like, no, people yeah. shouldn't be racist towards you. Well, exactly. exactly. And like, if people are going to hold that against you, like, well, you're never going to. Like you can't change the thing about you that they don't like, and then well, like why do you want to win them over either. Well, why they shouldn't just like you for that reason anyway, because it's a terrible thing to feel about anybody. You know what I mean? So they should all just like stop being so horrible and racist and just be nice and honestly get out of the church because you're blaspheming already by being that hateful to somebody. That's not what God would have wanted of you. And if you listen to what the person was saying there, you would know better. So don't even be there. It warmed my heart though when you saw Lucille go to the church and just feel 
a massive warm welcome from everyone. I did like that part. Yeah, I did. Who else I really loved about as well? Val was yeah. so yeah. loved him and they so support. lovely. And she's not religious, but she also said she go. She volunteered to go to church with her, even to the new one. And I just thought that was quite similar to the fact that what Barbara kind of did, because she's also a heathen. But she, you know, she obviously, we spoke about it before, let's not go through that again, because it was awful. But but then Lucille did go to the church, and Barbara's death was the catalyst that she did need to send mm-hmm. her there. Life's too short to be going through these horrible things and singing solos in churches where people are horribly racist. She's going to go to the church where people remind her of mum. And then they sang and ended the episode, by the way, with the most beautiful voices singing Amazing Grace. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it was absolutely gorgeous. I just thought, oh. And then she just looked so happy and so welcome. She was just there singing along. And, oh, it warmed the cockles of my heart. And I was looking out for Cyril. Is that the church where she meets Cyril? Because then Cyril becomes the pastor, doesn't he? I don't think Does she think bring him to that church? I can't remember. He's the, he's the mechanic, Bex. They, they meet when oh. he's working on the car, when he's working on Phyllis's car, I think. Yeah. Oh, is it the moped? No, it's the car. It's the car. Oh, okay. <laughs> the moped was Alec. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> I think we're like, or was it this? And we're like, no, it's not. Just don't, <laughs> don't say it. it wasn't. Thing is, though, I don't want us to have a bad reputation, like we're bullying Bex or whatever. That she's got a bad memory. She genuinely does have a bad memory, and that's why we say it. Yeah, it's awful. Oh my god, wait a minute. Sorry, you guys. This is like unpod related. But look at this photo I just found of me when I was in sixth grade. Oh my god, oh my god. who are you with? Your teacher. My teacher. My teacher. You look you know so what? grown up. I know. Well, this was like, I think we had a concert or something like that. Look how skinny my legs are. Also, she was like 25. Like we were literally her first class out of teaching school. And she got engaged, I think at the end of our year. And yeah, how young she is. At the time, she looked like, so oh, she's 25. She's so old. Getting engaged that old. I know. <laughs> look at my little baby face. Oh, yeah, you look very similar to now. I know. Well, that's the thing. I've always looked like this. Yeah. I've always looked like a middle-aged woman. (laughs) (laughs) Didn't want to say it, but we met you when you... (laughs) That's so funny. No, and the thing is, I'm I'm really joking on myself. Your comment has just made me realize that we are, like, we're (laughs) middle-aged. I know. God willing, we're I only didn't know, Jen. I didn't done. know. Well, that's the thing. We're half. I mean, listen. If all goes to plan, we're 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 at the fifty percent mark right now. Oh, don't tell me that because I genuinely yes. didn't realize up until this point, and now I feel. Oh, really I've wrong. realized it because I work with loads of apprentices and graduates, and they're all like, we worked out the other day that I work with someone, and I'm a mum's age. Well, this will make you feel old. So look at, okay, so that picture was on top of this that I'm going to show you guys right now. It's a certificate of appreciation, but literally this looks like I got it in about 1700. Look at this. <laughs> I don't know if you're going to cut this from the, the font up. is ridiculous. Like yeah, that was like, done in 1971. <laughs> no, try 1771, okay? <laughs> this is like the sister document to the Constitution of the United States of America. <laughs> <laughs> oh my yeah that is God. that is really weird I'm not gonna lie that's hilarious oh that's hilarious oh girls i mean i don't know if you want to leave all this into the podcast but like we're I my do. mom is going through all this stuff in our in our you know like in our house because we're trying to still unpack obviously and there's so many boxes that were labeled for this is my sixth grade graduation this photo and there are so many boxes that you know just like just like the 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 detritus of life you know what i mean like just all the stuff you collect and god it's just like it's just never ending and like almost every day when i come from work she's like you gotta see this and it's something that like my sister did or i did or like from like she found this book that she gave my dad like the year they got married you know like all this stuff like that and it just it just like it's just it'll never stop blowing your mind like it's it's Finn, one thing when a, you're do you have a ceremony for every year you graduate like every year of school no no so sixth grade was the end of elementary school oh uh, okay okay the end okay. of i don't know what you guys call it but or i can't remember now primary school but, primary school so this, this year was the this was the end of that and then the following year I went to what we call middle school and that was seventh and eighth grade and then after that I went to high school so this was this was like a big deal because we were leaving the school for good you know now but, even though you say that I'm very minimalist and get rid of everything I do keep random stuff like that so I probably like 
after after my day, you will find a box <laughs> of just loads of random things. But Bex, one box? Well, it, at the minute, it's one box. We have at least 87 boxes. That's the problem. <laughs> my mum and dad were like, oh, we've got all your school books here. Do you want to collect them? I'm like, no. I didn't want to keep them in the first place. Why have you got my old school books? Like, get rid. I mean, mum was like, oh, we can't. And then my dad was like, that's why we've kept them. <laughs> But yeah, I don't want my geography book from year nine, where it's just, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, man. She's trying to make me put them in my loft. No, thank you. <laughs> Get rid. I mean, some of it's very, very sweet. And some of it is like, I mean, I will say like the perspective of time does help because there's stuff I know that like, especially with parents, it's really hard to give it away when it feels so fresh, you know? I mean, Al, I know you know what that's like. Like, I know you're probably good. No, at, like... I literally give away. I, I literally, I'm like, right, what are we keeping this week, Bob's? And she's like, no 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 and I'm like if you say if you're keeping it, it goes in your room she's like no <laughs> <laughs> we recycle on a weekly basis all of that <laughs> so you just kind of cherry pick here and there like a couple of things of hers that you actually yeah, most of the time we say oh that, do you know who'd love that grandma and granddad <laughs> I do that loads. They've got so much crap at theirs. Oh, God. I know. I will say, like, with my nephews, it's really easy to just... They haven't really gotten to the age where they're, like, producing a lot yet because they're just still so little. Oh, she's but I just... prolific, Jen. Oh, I know. Well, I just know, like, when I get that first card where they've signed their names and they say, like, love, you know... Ugh, I'm going to die I've got a painting that. that my nephew did where he's literally... I think he's, like, dipped a marble in paint and then, like, rolled it across a piece of paper. <laughs> And you're like, what? I'll cherish this forever. Yeah, it's in the box. I know. It's too sweet. It's too sweet. Oh, no. There's, there's sweet at first. And then you're like, oh, well, this, that's this the was thing. sweet. And now it's just absolutely at a certain, never ending, at a cer- incessant. At, yeah. At a certain volume, it will it will not have the same. Well, she's right just now, doing but... rainbows. And it's just, don't get me wrong, it's gorgeous. But it's just craft after craft after craft. And you're a bit <laughs> like, oh, granddad. Look, oh, do you know who looks like granddad? It isn't. Oh. <laughs> You love that. And she was like, but I gave okay. the same one to grandma last week. Yeah, but then then they've got two then. <laughs> They can share. They can share. Also, we're getting to the season now where like it's going to be time for like all the little kids to come home with like little little bunnies, you know, made with like glued on like cotton balls and everything. Yeah. I know. Oh, man. You know what? Weirdly, I've got an Easter egg I made with wool that's actually ace and i'm gonna try and recreate it so watch out for that girls oh yeah please keep us posted but yes bex we should get back to the episode we've, to the midwife. we've diverted well done bex you're much normally it's me carry on i know so i books. never ever tell us to get back so no. i'm glad i took your hint bex. alex is always so anyway <laughs> <laughs> dr turner is working at wadelock house which is a school it's like a I said it was a juvenile detention home, but I don't think it was. It's like reform school, right? It's like reform free, school, yeah. free Yeah, because jail. when Michael's sentenced, he, then he's sentenced to juvenile detention, isn't he? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But isn't this like a borstal, like the, the one before that? It's, 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 it's just it's, like it's, a boarding kind of place for delin- young delinquents. Well, basically, they're they're... They can't Liquid. leave and they have to work all the time. I mean, it's it's not a workhouse, but it kind of is in a way because like they basically have to do all these jobs around the whole place and they have to work all the time and then they can't leave. I don't know so what you my... call, call that, but... I've written a yeah, line here. My... Scabies, what a welcome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so wait, Michael's... girls. Not to be gross, but but like are scabies... Is that an, is that an STD? No. There's what? not... There's not... A... <laughs> What scabies? Where do you get do you, them? Do you think yeah, this an episode STD? was so much darker in your head? <laughs> and what? that's why it spread like wildfire through a reform school. Well, I don't know. Maybe you just get it by, you know, maybe it's like not sexual, but like... That's the very definition of an STD. I know, but <laughs> but, maybe, <laughs> but maybe it's like, well, what is it? What is it? What's scabies officially? I think it's... night is usually spread by direct put on skin to skin contact with a person who has scabies or it's like stuff like bedding things oh bedding oh okay so it's more like lice or something than it is yes yeah. okay okay fair enough you're right. a, was, you're, I... you're what you were thinking in this episode is really dark well i didn't i didn't think sexual but i just didn't know what it was and then i just was kind of like oh well anyways it doesn't really matter and i just moved on i didn't give it a lot of thought but anyway sorry <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, here's here's something lighter. You guys, you guys call it star jumps, and we call it jumping jacks. Isn't that funny? To be fair, they're both very infantilized words, aren't they? <laughs> Well, the thing is, they the guy said star jumps, and I was like, oh, okay. And I know, I mean, I, I knew what, it, what he was talking about. And then I was like, oh my gosh, they call it, like, we call it jumping jacks. And I was like, why do we call it jumping jacks? And then I and then I just got back to crying about Barbara, and I didn't think about it again. But anyway, Really quick, really quick, and I will get back to everything, Bex, but just really quick. I saw a TikTok this week, and it was about Americans not understanding what a lollipop lady was. I saw that TikTok. <laughs> And also, I didn't know it was called Lollipop Lady. Honestly, I thought you I didn't know. know. I didn't know. I thought I would know too. Because what's yours got... called? Oh, just like Crossing Guard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Fred is even a Lollipop Man. Yeah. Or That's is what that I thought you'd recent... know. Is that? But is that in a more recent series? Yeah, but still. Oh, is it the Listish yes. series? We'll have to see if they actually use the term Lollipop Man because I, if I've heard that, I it wouldn't have record re- it wouldn't have um i wouldn't it wouldn't i wouldn't have any recognition resonated. of it yeah. Yeah, it wouldn't have resonated with me like the other one i asked you guys a couple years ago was what's a lido and i i'd never know or i'd never known what a lido was before to be fair i've only ever been to one like once ever it's not yeah. something i've had around here mm-hmm. i love a lido it, so you guys want to talk about what it is <laughs> You would love it's one, Bex. It's an outdoor swimming pool on the coast. Is oh, it on specific? the coast? I don't oh, think no, it's specifically on the coast. It has to be. No, it's just an outdoor swimming pool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. My husband used to go to one all the time growing up. Yeah, I just didn't. I I just didn't know what a lido was, and I saw something, and I was like, "What?" And I and I so I had to ask, and then you girls told me, and I was like, "Oh, the lido near me when it closes for the autumn winter season, they have a session where you can basically bring your dogs." oh really yeah and i keep trying to book so i can take ned but i can't i can't get in it's like it's fully booked every and then part of me is like is it like it's fine swimming with just my dog but is that actually fun see one of the things i hate about swimming is sharing bodily fluids with other people the fact that they're could go i just hate swimming because of that wait a minute so dogs no thank you so wait the dogs don't just swim by themselves like you have to go in and swim with them I assume so. Ooh, no, I don't want to do that. No. I'd let the dogs go in all by themselves and just have like doggy pool day, but I wouldn't go in. I've never seen it, so I've not seen it in action, but I would imagine that you... I don't know how... I bet you it's just just the dogs and then you just stand there and like watch and it's like, oh, so cute for them. I bet you How do they get in and out? I know how they get in, but how do they get out? They just like jump in and they're out. Yeah, but they're not going to climb up the steps to get out, are they? Well, is it a ladder or is it steps? A ladder. Oh, but they could also, like, you could help them. Like, they could put their paws up and then you could, like, lift, help lift them out. Not to stop. What, <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> so anyways, back to the episode. Well, actually, no, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go off on one more tangent. I keep seeing TikToks <laughs> on people going to really nice, like, Airbnbs and stuff where they have uh, hot tubs and stuff. And they all keep basically getting scabies. <laughs> and I've seen so yeah. many people get horrible scabies kind of Are things from real? hot tubs. Yeah, serious. Oh my god! I, I would not. I'd be fine with a professional hot tub, but not. An I'll Airbnb. tell you what, hot tubs okay. are not for me. Hot tubs are not for me. They wouldn't. Like they were it. for me until I saw this TikTok, and now I'm never going in one ever again. Oh no! I because I bet people have sex in them as well. Well, but hot tubs are just also yeah. like definitely a breeding ground for just. I mean, disgusting stuff yeah. like germs and everything. It's just terrible. Like, I mean, talk about water that's not sanitary. No, yeah. no. Also, it's hot. I just, I'm not a hot water gal. No, no. I think we're actually going to run out of time to talk we're about not. Michael. Let's sometime. talk about Michael sometime. <laughs> As if anyone needed our hot tub commentary. He's the same okay. age as Timothy, he's, but he's isn't married. He 15? Isn't he 15? Or is he, he 16? He has to be 16. 16. Oh, so he's 16. married. Okay. 16. He's got okay. a girl pregnant, Alison. Alison, yeah. Weatherly. Oh. He's, he in Wade Lock, he's in Wadelock House because he was trying to earn money and he was just given the keys and told to move the stolen car and then obviously got caught. Oh. Yeah. Which, to be fair, a bit bloody stupid. 
I will they- say the scene where I don't know how old this 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 actor was when he got cast, but he I, he was very believable at, at fifteen. But really, ma- like what made me laugh was the scene between him and Doctor Turner, where he's getting treated for the wound on his hand, and they're talking and everything, and he's saying like, "I stole this car, but I didn't really mean to, but I also did do it, and I do feel really bad." But my my girlfriend's mom was like such a bleep that like oh, I didn't want to take any money off of her and everything. So then like you know I was like in a corner or whatever, and then and then he says something about anyway, Doctor Tr- like Doctor Turner mentioned the fact that he has a son and he's like well how old is your son and he's like oh he's your age and he's like he's actually in some trouble right now too and he's like oh well for what and he's like he went somewhere he wasn't supposed to go and like like, yeah, he went stayed out too late and stayed out too late he stayed out too late yeah exactly and like michael just starts laughing and dr turner is like oh and it's just one of those moments where like i don't know just something about this thing about the scene i just thought was really charming because clearly this i mean and, and and michael even says that he you know he's like i really needed someone in my in my life like you but i never had that person and i wish like not i wish you were my dad but you know what i mean but like i wish i had somebody that was like really there for me and could have kind of guided me in a better way otherwise i probably wouldn't be in this mess and um I don't know it was just really sweet and also like Timothy is very much I still think of him as a child here yeah yeah but then when you look at Michael he's got the weight of the world on his shoulders like absolutely his childhood is just over oh it's done it's and his wife has got the weight of a child bearing down hard because she's about to give birth to it yeah well, and and I mean, they didn't do it in a mean way, but he spoke before the three magistrate panel or whatever it was to decide the ultimate fate of his case. And, and I would have released him. Of course. You know what made me, though? The way they were talking. So so Dr. Turner's like, why can't I speak for him? And then the prison governor or whatever it is, governor was like, oh, you can't save them all. But then he got Timothy a suit and tried to help him as much as he can. And he was like, you just got to believe in yourself, Michael. Just believe in yourself. <laughs> speak for yourself and so he sees Alison just before he goes into court and he's like no Dr Turner go with Alison don't go with me she's more important so he goes in and he gives a speech of his life and he still gets three years (laughs) and you're just like oh great (laughs) well and they were like wow you know we really can tell that you're remorseful and you understood what you did was wrong and that you won't do it again but anyways we don't think you can really handle your responsibility so we're gonna send you to three years of jail where you can be traumatized and like demoralized basically and then get out and have the responsibility of but keep your spirits up here's your son she brings the son in afterwards and he sees him (laughs) and he's like yay three years of absolute horrificness with scabies (laughs) and now i don't get to see my son after all yeah i'm gonna miss every part of his early childhood yeah i hope he learns a trade that's what i thought you know i did think hopefully he'll put his head down and learn do something like education trade whatever and then come out and actually can apply it oh well also there was something very i would have to say i put here crude the boys in the borstal were taking the mick out of this michael something i don't know why they were absolutely carried on for oh, well, it, but he, they were... he said it he said it happens to everybody so right but they were like oh talking about his wife and they were like forget to pull out my goodness <laughs> it's very <laughs> crude for paul the midwife and he was like she's my wife and it's like they obviously put that scene in to explain it for us that he was married <laughs> <laughs> also we haven't spoken about how Alison actually finds out about Michael going up for court and everything. It's because yeah. Sheila is his. So, so Doctor Turner comes home, speaks to his wife about it, speaks to Sheila about it. She then he says, "Oh, can you look out for a, a Sunter, Mrs. Sunter, on the on your list? You know, your midwife list." She's like, "Oh, there's Which no one." I think is against some sort of code of conduct, but it anyway, is for both of them. And then, so oh she's no, like, oh, no, I would just say, like, husband, looking at the... Yeah. My husband's your husband's GP. <laughs> <laughs> now that would have been a little bit of an outside of the bounds. And she's like, he's going to be in court today. Did you know? And she, she and probably tells she had scab- he had scabies as well. <laughs> oh gosh. Well, I will. I will say this: that mother-in-law, Mrs. Weatherly, she was a bee. Golly. Well, you say that, but I'm telling you now: if my 16 year old daughter came home pregnant, I had to marry someone, and then he got sent down for three. I think I would also <laughs> be like, no. You're not seeing that absolute waste of bloody space. <laughs> you know, just from her perspective. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> he did steal a car willingly. <laughs> and it's true that he did. I know. But... <laughs> I just... I'm so mean about it. I'm sorry. But <laughs> would you not be happy? <sighs> As godmother to my daughter, would you be happy if I said to you, oh, guess what, Jen? 
I've just got herself pregnant. She's 15. She's about to turn 16 next week. I'm going to have to let him get married to save face. But then he's just gone and landed himself in Ballstool because he's just, you know, stolen a car. He's going to get three years. Right, this is, he'll get some good technical training. It'll be a good grounding for him. He could just oh. go to college, Bex. You don't need to go to prison for that. <laughs> You know who he's like? You know who he's like? He's like, who's the boy? Who's the boy that got that girl pregnant who was diabetic? Yeah, and then they that's went to the oh, I got that bit mixed up as well. Yeah, and then and then he got in, well, see, the boys got the both of those boys were going to jail because they were trying to do the right thing, but they did the wrong thing, and then they got sent down for it, and then they had to pay the consequences. So But they weren't trying to do the right thing by doing the wrong thing. They completely did the wrong thing. Well, I know, but they were kind of trying to do the right thing because Michael was trying to was did was think was doing like quote a job so that he could get money so that he could be like he could help um, Michael Allison. Stealing a car is not a job. It's not, but he was he he had felt that he only had one a one way out, and then the other boy I can't remember his name. He took what's her face like away. Paulette. That was Paulette's fault. She, I know, she but was he an was. Idiot. I've got a he lot was of anger. He was following her directions, thinking that that was the right thing to do. Allison never told him to steal a bloody car, Jen. <laughs> she didn't, but he was he was trying to provide for his family. Well, I'm not badly. saying it's like a I'm not saying it's like a good thing. He's staying away from my daughter. But I'm, if, if well, I'm going to move, here's here's a moral question though. What if they still love each other after three years and after he got out of jail, and then they wanted to reunite and be a family? Then what do you mean? Michael's what, gonna... still, I don't care if they love each other or not. If he's in prison, you can bugger off, mate. <laughs> Michael's going to be my hero for like going above and beyond to provide. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if he wanted to, he would. Okay, okay. <sighs> Uh, yeah, I'm just not having it for my for my bobs. It's not happening. To be fair, no. If they what if they did, and he and he he got his Duke of Edinburgh, great. <laughs> <laughs> Rolling Stones at the Regal, exciting. Wasn't allowed. Oh my to god, get. not exciting. Also, Doctor Turner, what are you doing? Not letting him go see the Stones. Oh my god. Well, and and think about it. Like that's like that's. Now, let's just wait. Stop for a second. Do you think this is like when the Rolling Stones were still yeah. kind of small? Like this yeah, is like early, early, early days, right? This yeah. is like the very beginning when he's like, oh, I just heard about this cool new band, the Rolling Stones, like that kind of style. Yeah, they formed in 1962. So, Oh, so this must have been right at the very beginning. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wow. God. Shall That's we do? Think about. Heroes and zeros, ladies. Is that do everything? It. Did we do it all? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, it was a big episode, but oh my Lord. not a load of storylines because obviously one overshadowed them all. Oh, I mean, I, I'm, I don't think we're all going to say the same thing, but I can kind of see us all saying the same thing. Who wants to I go first? Say, I'll go first. Phyllis is my hero. Yeah, that oh, was mine. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because even though she was going through her own heartbreak, she was supporting Tom mm. and she was there. For, I just love Phyllis and I just, my heart breaks for her. Same. That's not why she's a hero, but. She did amazing. She was so supportive of Tom. She did amazing. Absolutely. Absolutely. And she and also made like, it so that everyone could see Barbara before, that, that they, they yeah. loved so much before she died. My zero is going to be Michael's mother-in-law. Fair. No, Sorry. <laughs> That was me. <laughs> Alex is like, that's my hero of the episode. <laughs> right, Becky, you tell me if that was your niece and she's 15, <laughs> I'm talking in four years' time or five years' time, four years' time nearly, and she brings him home. Are you happy about that, mate? I'd be like, he's a good lad, deep down. <laughs> He'll go to or trade school. Like, uh, I don't think I approve of this. What do you think you're doing? We know for mm -hmm. a fact exactly which one you'd be doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's not Michael's mother-in-law. It's definitely not. I'm sorry. I'm not having her as a zero because she's not a zero. She may have well, had look, a I, mouth on her. I just still don't. I mean, even if even if she's not wrong, like there's a way to communicate and she just was not a, ve a very effective communicator because, I mean, the thing is, she was tearing Allison down at the she same time. She still deserve to be a zero. Well, listen. I still annoyed at my 15-year-old. Aren't you the ones that that are that have always said that we have to respect each other's zeros, whether we agree or not? Everyone is not against me. <laughs> my right, okay. My zero Becky is going to be. Becky gets to keep her zero how she wants it. Yeah, but does she want it? That I'm just letting her question it. Oh, I'm going to change. I'm going to switch. I'm going to have the people at Lucille's church that make her feel unwelcome. That was my oh, zero. That's a good one. Okay. <laughs> My hero is Mrs. Palmer. Yes. For Wait a getting Lucille to go to the new church, oh, welcoming her okay. to her lovely. I just really liked her, her accent and I just thought she really carried herself lovely and I just absolutely loved her. Yeah. So also, she, she, really she was good. very up and together considering she was two weeks postpartum. Yeah. Oh my God, Amazing. I know. She was. 
Um, my zero is Michael's mother-in-law. I'm joking. My zero <laughs> uh, is scabies. <laughs> I just don't think I need to explain that. Oh. Um. Okay, so my hero and zero. So I always want to do my hero second. So my hero, no, so my zero is going to be meningitis. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. It's worse than scabies. Yeah, it took Barbara from us. Like, yeah. gone too soon. And I, I just, like, you know, it's just terrible. And she never should have been robbed of a long life. And it's I an just... awful disease. Like, it is awful. We know someone yeah. who died with it. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I think, I mean, it's still clearly something that's like really, really terrible. And, you know, like, just no one should ever get it, if, you know, if possible. So yeah, just I hate that for her. And that's terrible. And then my hero, I, I mean, I don't know if any of us have said like Barbara explicitly, but I'm just going to give it to her and like, oh, specifically, yeah. <laughs> and specifically her bravery and yeah. kindness and yeah like caring of others even in the at the end of her life you know like even when she knew that it wasn't gonna work out and like even when she didn't know if it was gonna work out but she thought she was gonna lose the career that she'd loved her whole life you know she was still you know finding ways to you know think about a positive future and like you know all of that and I just think Barbara is a legend and honestly like just, I mean, I know she's fic- fictional, but a truly aspirational person, and I, I just think she's like one of the one of the good ones, one of the best. So, you know, like Barbara, man. All right, I love you, Barbara. Yeah. Yeah. Also, ladies, you know the actor who played Michael Sumter. Yeah. Yes. He also had a famous grandfather. <laughs> oh, who's <laughs> Who's <it> Richard Burton? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just went to. Oh, wait, so oh, wait, oh, wait. Are, you sure, are, you, are you sure it wasn't Cary Grant? <laughs> no, because he's not Welsh. So Oh, that's right. Oh, <laughs> yeah. that's right. That was Famous. that was the key fact that I missed on that yeah. one for sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, no, it was it was awful. I just wanted to give a bit of uh, lightness there because it was just so awful. Levity. Yeah. I know. Well, listen, I mean, I'm I'm sorry, listeners, that if you did decide to watch this episode in advance of listening to this episode, that you had to go through all of that because oh. I felt like I was losing a beloved friend, so... Oh, that really was man. my worst ever, ever episode as well. And last it's week terrible. was horrific. It's terrible. I will say this. It, there, When you... Uh, I don't know if either one of you have ever watched the episode of, like, the series Six Feet Under, but I watched that episode... I watched that show, like, God, it was... Ooh, maybe it was, like, almost 15 years ago now. But it was on... It was on Netflix on DVDs, and I would rent them on DVDs from Netflix, and I would watch them. Oh yeah, I forgot I, that. Yeah, and I got into this groove with Six Feet Under where I just watched, like that was all I was watching. Like I would just return one, watch one, you know, that kind of a thing. So it wasn't a binge the way that we think of binging like a TV show now, but it was as close as we had at the time. And not a spoiler, but just to say like when the the last episode of that show, I watched it, I had a very similar reaction to this Barbara episode because I had gotten so attached to these people. And that show is all about death because obviously it's about a you know family who, you know, has runs like a, a funeral home and everything. Right. And- I didn't hit it. Oh, it's, oh my God, it's such a good show. Man, it's such a good show. But anyways, it, like very well written, very well done. But I had just gotten so into the show that, you know, the end when that all this stuff is happening and they show, I don't want to spoil it if people haven't seen it. But anyways, it just really, really deeply affected me. And I just, you know, honestly, I think that's what really good entertainment can do. You know, you just get so invested in these people that are, you know, just on a TV screen, but done well, you really tug at the old heartstrings. So also 1600 is really worth watching. so much. And it's just so sad she's not going to be there anymore. I and know. also, when I, I, I want to kind of reflect on what I first thought when I first watched this episode, because obviously we all know what happens afterwards and stuff now. But at the time, I was just thinking, oh, my goodness, what's Tom going to do now? You know, ugh. I predict I don't, a crisis I, in faith. He'll, he'll get remarried. I hate to say it, but he will. Like, he'll, he'll yeah, grieve he and then he'll get remarried. Yeah, pretty fast. Well, the thing is, men just... never meant to do, be, though. No, I know. But men, men just do that. They just... I'm not to say, like, in a bad way, but he's going to get remarried. We'll find somebody else. You can't He'll still love Barbara. Barbara but... As if you could ever replace Barbara, though. Like, oh, there's like no he's... replacing Barbara. There's no, no replacing Barbara. Well, look at Dr. Turner. He loved whoever he was married to the first time, Timothy's Did mom. he? Because they never bloody talk about her. No, they don't, talk, they, don't, they don't remember her birthday or there's no photos of her. <laughs> and if there is a photo, Timothy? Tim, 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 
Timothy <laughs> squirrels it away, hiding it. Shame, shame. <laughs> oh, well, Dr. Turner had that moment with Tim where he was like, you know, what did he say? Timothy was so embarrassed. He was like, you'll always be my little boy yeah. and everything. And I was like, it's like oh, me and my six year old now. I'm like, mama, 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 mama. like she was a baby <laughs> still. And she's like, mummy. <laughs> She's She's like, I'm room. too old for this. Yeah. Do you know what, actually? You know, we was talking about going to the cinema before. We went to the cinema to watch the film and it was really terrifying at one point. And the little kid we were with got really upset as well. And uh, when we walked out of the cinema, we all walked out and she just looked at us and she went, let us never speak of that again. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, where have you even heard that? Let us never oh, speak gosh. of that again. Just like really soldiers dramatic. who survived World War II that like come home and they're like, we don't want to talk about it. Like Bob's is like, oh, I'm not revisiting that dark time in my life. It was just so dramatic as well. The letters never speak of that again. <laughs> I was like, all right, flipping egg. Yeah, it was a bit harrowing at times, mate. But... <laughs> it was just a movie. Okay, kiddo. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, well, we've talked so much. Have we said it all? But said so little. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we have. But, oh, I've just dropped me something on my laptop, so that'll be nice to edit. So, next week, we are discussing Series 7, Episode 8, but also we are reading... What's it called? Farewell, Farewell, to, Farewell to the East End. Not even about feathers. Farewell to the East End. Am I reading the right thing? I must be. I've sent you a photo. Farewell to the East End, and my goodness, I want to say farewell to that book. But yep. if you want to read along, that would be fantastic. And we're going to do a book review. Obviously, not this next week, but the week... And or nor the week after because we normally do a synopsis kind of thing. Mm-hmm. A okay. season round, season roundup. I can't even think. Is there only uh, one more episode? Yeah. Oh, there's a Christmas episode as well. Is there? Yeah. One more there's episode. Three, Christmas. Three episode. more weeks. Yeah. So I'm talking rubbish. But that gives you an extra three weeks. I've just literally got an extra two weeks there. <laughs> so. <laughs> But yeah, gives you time to read it and get over the depression of it and then listen to us again. I'm still not over it. I finished it a week ago. I'm still not over it. Oh, I've just it's not enjoyed it. But that's good for me. I, I will say this. if this, this, this will help because I didn't know this was going to happen, but I was so gosh darn grateful it did. So you'll read about three quarters of the book and you're like, you're like i don't know if i'm gonna make it like this is terrible it just goes like it just it goes from like bad to worse but then there is a wonderful really amazing uplifting happy heart and that will just you'll just coast right through the rest of the book once you get there right, and i won't say anything more about it but if you just get through the slog of like the first three quarters of it then when you get Funny. to the last bit you'll be like thank you bleep that i'm here and just know that from there like you can make it through good for ashley houseman yeah so so yeah so next week though <laughs> we are doing series seven episode eight so if you want to mm-hmm. listen to that and then listen watch that even and then listen along with us that would be fantastic yeah and in the meantime you can send us any questions to recall the midwife at gmail.com you mm-hmm. can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Threads, X it's called now before Becky corrects me, and <laughs> Facebook as well. Like so, and subscribe yeah. on all the podcast platforms. Yes, and leave us a review, a nice one. Yeah. Was a, bit friendly, wasn't it? a nice uh, one. Only a nice one. Yeah. Yeah. That's all. Anyways. Otherwise, you'll go to board store like Michael <laughs> and, and get, get scabies. scabies. <laughs> <laughs> that to be fair we've just got through the hardest one i think we're gonna get through so well done oh like. yeah yeah after this it's gonna be okay we're gonna yeah. be all right thank you so all much right, for girls. To us, and we'll see you next week see you next week